your account has lots of SKUs and your PPC is just hot mess right now, what do you do? My name is Stephen Pope. I'm the founder of my Amazon guy. And on my account, I have 417 active products and 940 inactive products. That is a lot of products and that's gonna be a lot of campaigns. More than 2,500 sponsored product campaigns are on my account right now. So the reason I'm shooting this video is because I was super frustrated with the account performance that I experienced coming out of the Mother's Day big boost. May is supposed to be the second best month of the year for my account, and it was kind of a piss poor performance. So one of the things that I discovered uh, is that there's this really cool new feature that's kind of unknown, and it's the ability to run a report to see how many of your products are simply eligible for advertising. This feature was actually released about a year ago, and inside of uh, this bulk sheet operation, what you can do is log into Amazon Advertising, go over to the bulk operations tab. To get to that, click on what looks like a little credit card here and click on bulk operations. You're going to need a credit card to run ads on Amazon because, man alive, are they expensive today. Uh, pro tip, though. If you get the American Express uh, credit card that's sponsored by Amazon, they will count that as an advertising card and give you uh, extra points on that. I think it's like 5%, which is a huge discount on Amazon ads. So definitely check that out. In any case, while we look in the bulk operations tab here, there's a lot of different spreadsheets that you can download and look at terminated campaigns and items with zero impressions and brand asset data. If you haven't run a bulk operation on your account in some time, let me tell you, there's a lot of cool data insights that simply didn't exist before. I get asked this question all the time. Should I run automated PPC tools or run the ads manually? And typically, historically, I've always stated that manual outperforms automatic. However, automatic outperforms no management at all. Typically, these automated tools are really good at bringing down costs, but they don't do a lot of strategic thinking for you. And you're trying to figure out how to grow the account almost as much as you're trying to limit your costs. So if you don't have any time to manage your account, automated PPC tools, they're, they're the best solution since sliced bread. But if you're looking for growth, you're going to need somebody to come in here and think like a pilot would. You can't just put this one on autopilot or you're going to get autopilot results. So when I was looking at like structurally speaking, like how could I tear this up? How could I make some major changes? The first thing that I wanted to do was go and look at bulk operations. And when we look at the file and take a, take a gander here, there's some cool information that started to pop out. And I was going column by column, just trying to take all the data in. And I came across this column, eligibility status, informational only. And I was like, oh, I haven't paid attention to that in like ever. And with a high skew chaotic account, like the one that I operate under Age of Sage, it makes sense to check out. So when we look at the column, we can see whether something is eligible or not. And in my case, I, I'm lucky. I have nothing that is ineligible. So I've knocked this out. This is an easy task to figure out. Is any ad banned? Some of you might recall, I did a whole series on my number one wine glass that got banned from ads. It was organically ranked number one for the term wine glass, which was a huge 50,000 a month impression term. And when it got banned from ads, it lost its organic ranking and went all the way down to position 47 and never recovered. And so you can see, I did a whole series on this. If you're interested in seeing how I was going through that, I lost that battle, by the way. I never got the product unbanned from ads, uh, and it was a huge mess. So I was having a little bit of PTSD, taking a look at these, uh, you know, my account performance, and I was like, wait a minute, is, is, is one of my ads banned? Well, when I looked at this, luckily, eligibility status, nothing came up, and I was super fortunate. So that one was knocked out. A lot of people don't even know this exists. So if you haven't done a, a bulk operation sheet download and you have a lot of SKUs on your account, this is going to save you a lot of heartache when you discover, oh my gosh, they mark this one product for adults and it's not an adult and then you get it fixed and your ads come back online. 
or there's one SKU that's taking all the impressions because the other SKU has an issue. All kinds of scenarios that can come out from this. So it's a huge boon if you check it out. The help file or the announcement on this is pretty sparse on information. Pretty much everything I covered in this video is all you need to know, uh, but it does walk you through the fact that this is eligible in certain countries, not eligible in, in every single market, and how you can use it and where it's available and, and information like that. It is also available for Vendor Central if those for you that are on VC. Okay, cool. So nothing is banned. What else can I do? The next thing you want to do on a high SKU account is create a single automatic campaign with every single product inside of it. You're gonna set the bid to five cents and then have every single product have its own independent ad group. So you'll have one gigantic campaign with one ad group per product. So I have 417 active products right now. This campaign will have 417 ad groups. And for those of you who haven't done this maneuver before, you might be wondering, why would you do this? Well, it's simple. This is going to be the highest performing campaign for the available impressions that it can purchase. It will access the lowest available bidding inventory. And because the bids are so low, any traffic at five cents, even if you just take a, a, an abysmal conversion rate at, say, 3%, Let's say the average on Amazon is 8% and you're pulling in 3%, but you're, you're converting on 5 cent traffic. Well, if you run the math at 5 cents, you're going to get thousands of additional clicks for the same price that you would be getting at a dollar per click with an 8% conversion rate. And it's going to outperform it by three, four, five, sometimes even as much as 6x. Um, now, the drawback of this campaign is it's going to barely spend anything. Well, most of you cheapskates out there are going to be like, well, that sounds like I, it's exactly what I'm looking for. I want to spend very little and get lots of money, right? This is that campaign. So it's not scalable, but it's a no-brainer. And whenever I look at an, uh, a high skew account, this is the first activity I run is to create a bulk sheet download and set up an entirely new campaign with one ad group per product with a five cent bid. You can always um, test this out yourself with minimal risk, and you can always raise the bid if you feel inclined, but I don't. I leave it at five cents and I let it run and do its thing. I have other auto campaigns independent from this on the same SKUs with different bidding methodologies and their own sets of negations. But on this five cent campaign, the amount of negations that you need or require is almost nil. You don't really need to negate any traffic because, again, if the average conversion rate was 8% on Amazon and you're pulling in 3% and it's garbage traffic, it's still going to outperform your regular campaigns. So this is a really cool uh, optimization hack. The, a lot of high skew accounts just simply don't even know they can do this. Uh, and it, it's a, got a great performance. And I've tested this out for years on and it still works in 2023. The nice thing about the help files on bulk sheets in general is that they're actually quite helpful. So if you've never done a bulk sheet before, it is quite daunting, especially if you're not an Excel wizard. But rest assured, some of the tutorials on this are actually quite good. Uh, so it talks about why to use bulk operations. This is all over in the Amazon Ads Advanced Tool Center. We'll send a link to this at the top of the video so you can check this out. It walks you step by step on how to manage campaigns, what bulk operations you can create, some Excel file examples. Uh, it gives you some tips like deleting the other tabs so you can just focus on the sponsored product tab. I would highly recommend that. Uh, just focus only on sponsored products while you're doing bulk operations your first couple of weeks. Make it easy. Focus on the 80% that gets you on base. Uh, there's some exclusions you can look at and, and, and narrow down the filters and the focuses. It walks through how to upload the bulk sheets uh, as well as what errors to expect and what's going to happen when it works and when it doesn't as well as statuses and the performances and everything in there. So I do recommend doing some formal training on this question. So on my sheet, I have 2,500 rows of data uh, that require, you know, optimizations or, or techniques. And, and going through this line by line could take forever. It wouldn't even really save you time. So one of the things that a lot of people do when they do bulk operations is they'll take a filter and they'll try and zero in on some key areas. For example, they might go and look at the ACOS column. 
and create a filter and you can sort this from largest to smallest, for example. So let's just start with something super basic in Excel uh, wizard hack, if you will. And in here, uh, we have one particular row at 226 uh, percent ACOS. We could create a filter for anything above, say, 70 percent and just flat out pause all of that. And then uh, and, 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 and after you've done that, we might go to the 69 percent down to, say, 55 percent with this section right here. And for these, instead of pausing these, we might do like a bid modification. So if the bid, uh, which you can see, I think that's in the AS column. Let's scroll over. CPC is right there. Uh, and so we could look at the bid column and basically run a concatenation of, say, a 20% change and down, down uh, bid these 20%. So if this one's normally at $1, that would, be, that would go all the way down to $0.80. Cents. And so by doing this, you can create bulk changes on the most important areas first. If you were trying to hunt this down manually, uh, whether it's an ad group or a campaign, you would have a lot of challenges trying to locate the biggest uh, things you should do, the most important watermelon fruit versus the apples and the peaches up on the tree where you got to reach. The watermelon fruit on the ground is right here, right? If ACOS was the number one thing you are focused on right now, this column right here, create a couple of filters and you're off to the races. Another way you could look at that, of course, is... Um, on ROAS or spend levels, maybe you want to just look at the campaigns that have the highest spend. So if we look at, you know, hey, I want to make the most meaningful impact today, I'm going to just simply focus on these seven ad groups, these seven campaigns with the highest spend um, and, and sales right there. So hey, wow, this particular one, it's doing great. This one's at 23% doing really good with that. And it's, it's an ace of targeting campaign. Uh, which we can see right there. And product expression, information only. Well, what's it doing? Uh, it gives us some information about how we're targeting and what it's doing and all of that good information. Gives us the conversion rate. Did you know you have the conversion rate on your ads? Wow, this one's at 18%. And it's got a high velocity with $4,000 in sales and 246 orders. That's pretty good. We know that... Uh, Average, uh, conversion rates on Amazon can be anywhere from an average of 8 to 12%. So if we got PPC coming in hot at 18%, that might be pretty good. Well, let's see how high we can get the conversion rate. Well, we've got some camp. We have one campaign at 150%. That means some dude purchased probably multiple items or had multiple orders off of two clicks. So two clicks, three orders. That means they bought twice. That's pretty cool. Well, obviously can't replicate that. But if we were going to just try and filter and look at, say, our highest conversion rates, plus if we ran a different filter for number of clicks and we said, hey, only things that are greater than, say, I don't know, 25, that then we get a pretty good idea. So my highest conversion with at least 25 clicks is 32%. Uh, but if you go down here pretty quick, you can see that the bulk of mine are going to be below that 12% threshold. So this will give you a pretty good idea of what's going on in your account very quickly uh, and a lot of different filters that you can run. Well, after you've run a bunch of these filters, you can always undo all the filters and clear those out and start over. Uh, you could run keyword uh, duplicate analysis. Uh, where you go to the keyword column and see how many different keywords are showing up multiple times. I don't think that's a problem. Some people do. You could go in and look at portfolio by portfolio. So if you want to look at the portfolio and say, I only want to focus on soaps for this particular run, or maybe I want to look at tumblers, you can go by portfolio. The more complicated your account is, the more likely you're going to start using portfolio names so you can focus in on key areas. Maybe you have some seasonality. Maybe you got some products that only sell during a certain part of the year. That might make a pretty good case to run a portfolio. So that gives you kind of a taste of what you can do inside a bulk sheet. Sometimes I think it's important to just do content around what's possible. Um, most of my other PPC tutorials are straight up step-by-step, step, like do this, get that. You're going to want to check out this PPC uh, playlist next and a lot of other cool stuff. Check us out if you want to hire my Amazon guy to run your PPC. Go on over to myamazonguy.com. And then finally, we have a bunch of free PPC tips. Check those out at myamazonguy.com slash PPC. Pretty much every graphic I've ever made 
uh, you can check out and see what we've made uh, for all of the various different rules we've created and activities you should focus on. A lot of cool free tips. Check that out, myamazonguy.com slash PPC. We'll see you later.